I want you guys to always have faith in the fact that hard work is king. The art of training, the individual nature of training, where you're going to put together a selection of exercises that work for you based on injury history and available equipment. And then we factor in passion, right? There's so many variables well, well outside of the this, this spectrum of frequency that can't be contained in a simple variable. That's the beautiful thing about training. So what gets me when somebody gets hyper-focused in the cult of frequency is that they do a disservice to what training is, the heart of what training really is. It's not that we can't learn things, generalities. It's just that the truth is hard training, passion, crushing the shit out of the iron. What I did yesterday in my back workout can't be quantified scientifically. It can be generalized scientifically. I know from 39 years of training, I can tell one back workout from another. It can look the same on paper. It can have the same principles. But in execution, the micro nuances can make my back workout yesterday, which looks equivalent on paper from a scientific standpoint, to things I've did for 38 years. It can look similar, but I know it was more impactful because there are so many variables and micro nuances in a training day that science and the spectrum of all this frequency stuff can't contain it. And that's the beautiful thing about lifting. I am in there like having a religious experience yesterday. And I don't mean, uh, you know, to sound exaggerated, but it was one of the best back workouts I've had in a long time. I could just feel things. And during my eccentrics, I was fighting it with the negatives and I could feel the back working and I had the energy and I had the motivation and every rep, every inch of every rep, I could feel just an amazing experience. I don't always have the energy or mental fortitude or capacity to do that. I give what I can on every day. But the point here is that I did the same workout that I did for the last year, but it was like up here rather than here. It was a 10, 11 rather than just an eight or an eight and a half. Science can't quantify that. Science can come on and say lunges and mechanical angles and the angle 47 and a half degrees and the tension and the length and partials. That's great. I'm not anti-science. And some people that get reactionary out there in lifting, when you try to present them with the concept that there's a bigger picture than just science, there's this world of art that can't be quantified. When you're in your headspace and in a rep and in a set, and you can feel the extra tension on every inch of every eccentric, That's where I like to be. It's not anti-science. It's not, let's slam the science guys. It's not, let's chuckle about the madness of frequency training and the cult of frequency training. And the cult of obsession over optimization, barbells versus dumbbells and two day versus one and a half day frequency splits versus body part splits and people going out and telling you lunges are shit and bench press is shit and deadlift is shit for back training and shrugs are shit for trap training. I've heard all of this stuff in the past year. And I come on here over and over again trying to save you guys from that nonsense. Not because 
Let me phrase this the right way. Because there's a bigger picture. So I was sitting around the other day, and I saw a video from Dr. Mila Wolf. And when I say somebody's name, I'm not attacking them, okay? I saw a video by Dr. Mila Wolf. And it was like nine underrated exercises. I don't want nine new exercises. I want to find the exercises that work best for me. I've tried them all. You guys can try them all. You guys can try his exercises. But the constant content machine, new exercises, opti- the, the focus on optimization, uh, the misguided focus on optimization, right? The obsession with trying to find optimal splits, and optimal frequencies, and uh, optimal this and optimal that, right? I am against it to this degree because I know when you are in the gym and you are doing the same workout you did last week, there is a way to take it to a next level that has nothing to do with science, that has nothing to do with frequency, that has nothing to do with magical exercises. There is a whole realm that exists outside of quantifiable variables in training, and that is the exciting part of training for me. That is what I love about training, that I can go in and do little nuanced things during a set that make no sense at all in the scientific realm. But I can feel it. I can feel the extra tension. I can feel the extra focus. I can feel the extra drive. Now, you can say, You want to control, I tell people, you want to control the rep up, get a slight stretch on your lat pull downs, and then drive your elbows down. That's a starting point. That's information I give to people. One could say that's a scientific, basic scientific analysis of how to step into the hard training realm, right? Um, Client yesterday sent me his seated cable row, and it's like torso way forward swinging, torso way forward swinging really quick. So we need to refine that. We need to refine that so it's not just moving rapidly through space. So we give a basic scientific foundation, technical foundation for how to maximize that exercise. So that's step one. Okay, you want to control it down, pushing back as you control with the elbows so you can feel that back work until you get a slight upper back lat stretch. Your torso can move just a little bit forward. And then during a seated cable you row, you want to initiate by driving the shoulders and the elbows back in a semi-powerful and focused manner. Not too powerful where you're sloppy, but in a focused power manner. We can really feel that back contraction. And during that movement, your torso can move slightly back as a result of moving your shoulders and elbows back. Then when you're moving it forward, you control it down, pushing back at the elbows, getting a slight stretch on your upper back and lats, and repeat. This is a technical, scientific, easing you into the scientific or the technical way to train hard. It is like teaching someone guitar. Here's technically how you do this chord or how you transition between these chords, right? Or if you're learning something in college, this is technically how you solve this or do this, right? It's a base level of communication. It's a foundation. But we all know that no matter what you do for a living, there is an art to it. There is an art to programming that can't always be quantified. There's an art to music, obviously. You can know the notes, 
but that doesn't mean you can make brilliant music because the brilliant music is found in the art. The same goes for lifting and science and optimization. You can have that platform, right? You can understand what I just taught you on the seated cable row, but there are ways to take that well beyond what I just, I, I can't even explain the feeling of what it is like to crush a next level set of seated cable rows. And I'm not even going to failure and I'm absolutely destroying my body through focus. All things are clicking. Oh, everything, every inch of that exercise, I can feel I'm getting something out of it. That is the art of training that is placed upon the foundation of training. The foundation of training, what would be considered the optimization or chase for scientific, uh, a scientific platform, that's all good and well. We're not anti-science, but what we do is we understand that a basis is not the endpoint, okay? We can discuss frequency. We can discuss exercises. Dr. Milo Wolf put out a video where I believe he said he didn't like lunges. Lunges are going to be highly variable for the individual, right? It's a quality exercise for many. We, we can't remove pieces of the puzzle. We have to keep a reasonable scientific platform. But a scientific platform is a launching pad for the art of lifting. Programming is so complex and individual focused, right? Individual derived. So when I put up a meme like that, the comments I get about being anti-scientific or uh, you know, all the you're, you're just an anti-science, you know, meathead. No, I'm not. I'm a guy that understands and I'm trying to teach you that this platform is not the endpoint. It is a base level of knowledge. And you do not even need to, like when we try to turn this platform into rules, right? Like frequency, it's got to be this frequency or this exercise. You've heard it all. Come on, let's be real. You, you're around this. You're around this industry long enough. You've heard someone tell you deadlift sucks for hypertrophy. I've heard Paul Carter say shrugs suck for traps. Bullshit, Paul. I could, my traps can be sore for days when I do them right. Bullshit. I've heard people say, I'm not coming after, I'm just being honest with my opinion. Because this is what happens when you make these silly rules. You limit people, you take away reasonable options. It's the same with frequency training. You try to make a rule. Do you think, honestly, that if somebody goes into the gym and crushes the crap out of their training and their sleep and their nutrition, that there's going to be some grand difference in how frequently they train? Whether they split up that, if they have the same weekly volume, whether they split it up this way, that way, or the other way? No, because the hard training and the art and the dedication and consistency and the diet and the form and the all of this stuff is so much more important. It is only the people that have not been down this road that don't really understand it. And that might sound insulting. Are you saying that this person or that person doesn't understand it? I don't know what they're thinking. But I can tell you that there are an army of reasonable lifters behind me that would echo the same sentiment. We all train differently. And that can confuse people. Why do all advanced lifters train differently? Because it's not some magical optimization, science-based structure. It's having reasonable exercise selection. These are the 10 pillars of success in my book, Massive Omnibus. It's having a reasonable exercise selection. It's having consistency 
It's having some focus on progressive overload, some focus on hard training, which we just talked about. Nailing your nutrition, not just eating healthy, but being purposeful with bulks. It's about all these things. If you look back at the history of lifting over the last 70 years, every successful lifter trains differently. Confusing, confusing. It's only confusing if you live in their world of optimization. If you step outside of that world and you see all these commonalities, these pillars of success, all you need is a good quality selection of exercises that have a progressive uh, opportunity for progressive overload. You're trying to maximize every set. This is what I taught in my first book, Massive Iron. You're trying to maximize every set. You're nailing your nutrition, you're nailing your sleep, you're nailing your consistency, you're patient, you're living to fight another day, you're never doing anything in the gym that's going to risk you being out of the gym. If you work off this platform and you evolve your training based on the feedback you get in the gym, I don't like eight rep sets of Pendley Rose, I do six. That's me. Someone could say, you're an idiot. Why do you do low rep sets? Because... I'd like to. It's reasonable. Reasonable training applied hard with progressive overload over time is the way, folks. It is the way.